recommended in prayer. And this is usually referred to as Sunnah Nus Salat, the recommendations of Salat, the things that are recommended in Salat. And these things are either things you do or things you say. And either way, the definition of Sunnah is what you are rewarded for doing and you're not sinful for skipping or leaving intentionally. And this is part of what is known as Al-Ahkam At-Taklifiyya, the legislative rulings, which are five. Everything that is related to our forms of worship is one of these five. Either it's mandatory, if you do them, you're rewarded. If not, you're sinful. Or they are prohibited. If you do them, you're sinful. If you don't, you're rewarded. Number three, things that are sunnah, mustahab, recommended, emphatic things to be done. If you do them, you're rewarded. If you don't, there's no sin on you. Number four, makruh. And this is something that is abhorred. This is disliked, not recommended. If you do it, you're not sinful. Such as entering the masjid with your left foot. But if you skip it and not do it, then you are rewarded. And the fifth category is the permissible, al-mubah which is, whether you do it or not, this is up to your own preference. There is no related sin or reward for it by itself. So, the recommendation act, uh, actions, such as raising one's arms, when you say, Allahu Akbar, this movement is a pillar by itself, but raising the hands is a, Sunnah. Or whenever you move up and down in Rukur and up from Rukur. So raising the hands or the arms, actually it's the hands. This is what is being raised. You don't raise the whole arm, you just raise the hands. Anyhow, it's a technicality that would not uh, slow us down. Also, what is recommended is placing one's right hand over one's left hand and placing both over one's chest. So when I'm standing, it is one of the sunnas to do this. Should I do this or should I do this under my belly button? It's an issue of dispute. And it should not be an issue of disagreement and fighting. Because either way, it's a sunnah. So if you don't do it, it's not a big issue. Your prayer is valid. But to make this sunnah a cause of disagreement and dispute and a cause of fighting and enmity, this is totally prohibited. It is something that you do according to your conviction. What my brother praying next to me does is his conviction. It doesn't matter to me. So whether you put your hand here or here or even below your belly button, uh, below your navel, this is okay and there's no problem in that, none whatsoever. But what is the sunnah? The sunnah according to Wail ibn Hujr, may Allah be pleased with him, that the Prophet used to put the right hand over the left hand on the chest. And the chest is this area. So from here till here, all of this is considered to be chest. Among the mistakes that a lot of the people do is they do this when they stand in prayer. And this makes you tilted in the row and not standing straight and bothering those next to you on your left and on your right. They say that this is 
to hold and protect my heart while in prayer for khushur. What about if someone has a deformity in his heart on, on the right side? What would he do? This is not for me. Think that you're doing something. The Prophet did not figure it out, alayhi salatu wasalam. So putting the right hand on the left, <clears throat> on the chest is from the sunnah, while in the standing position. And this brings us to an issue that people usually also argue about is, when I'm in ruku' and I say, Sami Allahu liman hamida, where should I place my hands? A lot of the people say, just put them next to your sides. And those who follow the hadith of Al-Ibn Hujr say, Okay, let's analyze. What is this position I'm in at the moment? Hmm? We should put the right on the left on the chest because this is what the Prophet used to do while standing. And this is standing. So it's an issue of dispute. Either way, it's not a big issue. So don't make a fuzz out of it and do whatever you feel that it is more likely So when I'm standing up, what is recommended? What is the sunnah? Where should I look? I've seen some videos where the imams reading in Taraweeh and they have the cameras pointed towards them. And I don't know how would people allow this. I've been to many countries and whenever I lead the prayer, though I don't like leading prayers, but sometimes I may pray Juma. So they come immediately and put the cameras in my mihrab where I pray. And I tell them, move it. He says, no, no, this is Sheikh for recording so that it. I am facing Allah Azza wa Jal. The last thing I need is someone capturing how I'm praying so that I would be totally distracted. I don't need people watching me. So when you look at this famous Qari or that in these videos and he's reciting and looking straight forward. What is this? What kind of a salah is this? One of them said that we cannot recite beautifully unless we raise our heads and look forward. So don't recite beautifully. Concentrate on your salat, not on pleasing others. So what is the sunnah? The sunnah is to look where you put your forehead on the ground. This is your spot of prostration. And this is where you should keep your eyes at all the time, except when you are in the tashahud position. When I'm in the tashahud position, the sunnah for me, join the middle and the uh, uh, thumb and clench the other two. So it's like this. I'm doing this, pointing it to the Qibla and moving it in its place like this, not up and down and not round and round going in circles. And this is the way point and just shake it. Sunnah is to look at your index finger, not on the spot of prostration, but if you do look at the spot of prostration, there's no problem in that. This is a sunnah. Okay, and then placing one's hand on one's knees with one's fingers apart when in the rukur position. Also, this is sunnah. So many people do this. Some people put their hands inside their thighs in rukur. Some people go down to their shin and touch and hold and grab their legs. All of this is not true. The right thing is to spread your fingers, put them on your kneecap and straighten up your back because this is also part of the true sunnah of rukur, keeping one's back straight and one's head in line with it during rukur or bowing. Okay, what about, are there any more? Of course, there are many more, but the book is a concise summary. So if I were to tell you that 
among the sunnah of actions that the book did not mention, raising the hands where? So this is raising the hands. But if I raise my hands like this, it's valid. Some people raise their hands like this. Or the earlobes is not part of the sunnah. Then putting your hand right over the left on your chest, how is it done? There are two types of doing it according to the sunnah. According to Sheikh Al-Albani, may Allah have mercy on his soul. Either put the right hand over your left and some parts of it over your wrist and arm. So it's like this. Or you grab your wrist with your right hand like this. So both of them are sunnah. If one does this, no problem. If one does this, no problem. If one does this instead of this, this is all sunnahs part of the sunnahs of the prayer. What else? Also, how to sit. This is not mentioned in the recommended things to do in Salat because it is recommended. And what is iftirash? See, I'm all tied up with these wires and I am hesitant to move so that the cameras would not move and why do I say cameras? Because we have YouTube on board for the first time. So this is uh, going live on YouTube channel. I hope it works. I don't know. It's the first time I ever tried it in my life. So let us see the, the results. So um, I would have shown you. But you know that I have a clip that was released one last month, alhamdulillah. It's on YouTube, on the description of the Salat of the Prophet You'll find it on my channel. It has more than 100,000, 110 views since it was launched last month, alhamdulillah. So I show you how to sit in the position of iftirash. And that is to, to sit on your left foot while erecting your right foot with your toes as much as possible pointing to the qibla. This is how you sit in the first tashahud. And also you can sit in the position of iftirash. And what is iftirash? Sheikh, you just said iftirash. Apologies, I was just testing you to see if you're awake or not. Uh, in the position of tawarruk, that is. And the position of tawarruk is to put your left leg underneath your right leg so then you will not be sitting on your left foot you will be sitting with your left buttocks directly to the ground so this is your hip actually reaching and approaching the ground with your left leg underneath your right leg with your right leg erect with your toes as much as much as possible to them so this is part of the sunnah but if you sit anywhere or anyhow in any position, this is still valid because you're allowed, you're supposed to sit. And also part of the sunnahs of um, the salat, maybe it was mentioned, I did not see it, maybe it's not, is to look right and left in salam. So saying assalamu alaikum to conclude your prayer is a pillar. But looking right and left is part of what is recommended in prayer. So you should add this just for your information. And maybe there are many more. I don't know. Okay. What are the recommended words in, that included uh, in the Salat? This is the most famous and shortest inauguration dua this is said immediately after saying allahu akbar you immediately begin with dua or you say allahumma ba'id bayni wa bayna khatayaya kama ba'adta bayna al-mashriq wa al-maghrib wa naqini min khatayaya kama naqu al-thawb al-abiyadu min al-danas wa aghsini min khatayaya bil ma'i wa al-bardi wa al-thalji wa al-barad this is also part of the sunnah narrated by abu huraira in sahih al-imam muslim وجهت وجهي الذي فطر السماوات والأرض also اللهم رب جبريل وإسرافيل وميكائيل فاطر السماوات والأرض عالم الغيب والشهادة 
Some say that this is also included. Some say that this is for night prayer. There are so many. So these are all sunnah. Sheikh, I have a very urgent thing to do. And I have only like a minute and a half to pray my sunnah. Can I skip it? Skip it. It's a sunnah. It's not a pillar nor mandatory. So there's no problem skipping it. Afterwards, saying, A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajim. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. This is also sunnah. It's not mandatory. <gasps> Shaykh, how do you say Bismillah Rahman Rahim Sunnah when it is part of Al Fatiha? This is an issue of dispute, and the most authentic opinion is that the Fatiha is not composed of Al Basmala as verse number one. Shaykh, this is awkward. When we open the, the Quran, it says Bismillah Rahman him number one and Allah mentioned that Al-Fatiha is composed of seven verses so if we drop this this means it's six verses the answer is no as I said it's an issue of dispute the most authentic opinion is that the Fatiha is composed of seven verses but instead of combining the last two verses as is in the Quran writing copies we have be Two separate verses. So it's Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, Ar Rahman Ar Rahim, Maliki Yomidin, Iya Kana Abudu, Wa Iya Kana Stain, Ihdina Sirat al Mustaqim. In the books it says, Sirat al Ladina and Amta Alehim, Ayrin Mordu Alehim or Dalin. While it should be Sirat al Ladina and Amta Alehim, Ayrin Mordu Alehim, one of Dalin. These are the seven ayat. And the hadith of the Prophet. When he said that Allah, the Almighty, says, when his slave stands in prayer, Allah says, I've divided prayer between my, myself. As Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, Allah says, my servant has praised me. Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, my servant has complimented me. Maliki Yawmiddin, my servant has glorified me. This is between me and my servant into half. Etc. Allah says, this is for my servant and my servant shall get what he asked for. So it clearly states that Bismillah is not part of Al-Fatiha. So what is Bismillah? Bismillah Rahman Rahim is a separate ayah that comes in the beginning of Surah Tawbah. So it is a separate ayah to divide between surahs, except in the case of Surah At-Tawbah. So saying, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem, Bismillah Rahman Rahim, is a sunnah, is a highly recommended thing to say during your prayer. And also among the sunnahs, when we say, when the Imam says, غَيْرِ الْمَغْضُوبِ عَلَيْهِمْ وَنَضَّى Overwhelmingly reported in the Sunnah that the Prophet used to always say it, alayhi salam, his companions used to so say it, may Allah be pleased with him, and all the Muslims worldwide say it, if not loudly, then they say it silently as part of their prayer. But it is a Sunnah. Among the things that we say during Salat that are Sunnah is reciting a Surah after the Fatiha. Fajr, we have two rak'ahs. Maghrib, we have three rak'ahs. Dhuhr, Asr, and Isha, we have four rak'ahs. In Fajr, we recite the Fatiha and the Surah in both rak'ahs. And so, with all the other prayers. However, these surahs are not mandatory. So if I were to recite or to pray Fajr prayer and only recite the Fatiha and say Allahu Akbar and make Rukur. In the second rak'ah, I recite the Fatiha, غير مغضوب عليهم والضالين, Allahu Akbar and make Rukur. Is my prayer valid? The answer is yes. Sheikh, but you did not recite a surah. Yeah, it's true. I've abandoned a highly recommended sunnah. But my prayer is valid because it is a sunnah. 
adding more than one glorification during bowing and prostrating. So when I'm in the rukur position, the mandatory thing is to say once, Subhana Rabbi al azim and in sujood, Subhana Rabbi al a'la once. It is highly recommended sunnah to say them more than once. So do it three times, five, ten, fifteen, twenty, up to you. The sky is the limit. Don't burden those praying behind you. And if you're praying on your own, the sky, again, is the limit. Um, supplication before finishing the prayer. So part of the things that are recommended in Salat, after I finish the salutation and for offering salam, it is highly recommended to make dua. So among the dua, Allahumma na'udhu bika min adhabi jahannam wa min adhabi al-qabr, min fitnat al-mahya wal mamat, wa min fitnat al-masih al-dajjal. These four things the Prophet used to teach his companions to recite them. Also, part of what we are encouraged to say before salam, Allahumma a'inni ala dhikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadatik. In the famous hadith of Mu'adh ibn Jabal, O Mu'adh, I, by Allah, I love you. The Prophet said to him, O Mu'adh, do not leave these words at the end of every prayer. So the most authentic opinion that it is to be read, to be said before the salam. Is it mandatory? The answer is no. The most authentic opinion, it is not. Because some scholars said that Allahumma na'udhu bika min adhabi jahannam min adhabi al-qabr min fitnat al-mahya wa maat min fitnat al-masih al-dajjal True, and it is highly recommended. And there are a number of other sunnahs to be said during the salat, but these are the major ones.